And then you can also define by using specific dollar amounts, maybe a percentage retracement or a specific profit trail. And as I mentioned earlier, that a lot of these trades, you know, you exit simply because uh, the, the whole, the move ended, you know, so you want out. So let's look at um, some of this live action here. And you can see that we've got this British pound defined, and we have this target, minimum target here. You can see it was hit at 157.87. By going to this view analysis, I can go to this price range forecast, and I can see that I have all these different identified uh, areas that this market could go to. So looking at this as a 15-minute chart, uh, this is going to help me determine, I can use these power stats to determine if this is a valid enough target. So I can see that the minimum or the bottom area here is 157.87. By going to this, I can see that 157.87 actually is below what AutoTardis is predicting can go to based on this price range forecast. So the first time it goes to 157.87, I may not want to be as aggressive when I get out because uh, this 15-minute chart, according to this these stats, could go a little bit higher. Okay. Now, if I was working with a 30-minute chart, you could see that it's pretty close to uh, 157.95, and of course, if I was working on an hourly chart, 157.85 compared to the 157.87, that would be fairly close. So that's the kind of cluster I would look for to say, you know what, this is a good price to exit on because if I hang on too long, I might give back my profit. Um, also, in this movement per hour, I like to look at what hour I'm trading so that I can see where there's action. I don't like to get caught in this kind of action here where uh, the pattern may be good but because of historical tendencies and sometimes hysterical tendencies too you don't want to get caught in a market that isn't moving and that's why uh, I tend to want to trade use this power stats indicator as a tool to tell me when I'm getting good action and then I also look at this sometimes to give me a tendency of how the market's going to trade on a particular day um, <clears throat> that's not my favorite, and the reason is because uh, the the way these reports are coming out now, some of them you can bank on happening on a Friday, like unemployment reports, but some of these reports will come up different days. So if I'm going to use a volatility indicator and power stats, I'll look at when the big reports are going to come out. I won't necessarily look at daily, and then I'll look at those time zones and I'll look at my price tendencies to make sure that I'm trading the market when it's supposed, to, when it's expected to move, and when it can move. Okay. Now I think I've covered most of the points here. Um, I've covered the trailing stops. I've covered the target zones. The main thing, the points I want to make is that uh, to wrap this up and answer your questions is you want to make sure that you find a pattern like this, like this triangle, that gives you a good idea that there's going to be a breakout occurring. Okay, it's the best pattern to, to start with because this narrowing here pinpoints is going to be a breakout. So you have this setup. Have, make sure you have a setup. Okay, then after you have your breakout, you want to decide whether you're the type of trader that wants to trade the first breakout or if you wants to wait for two closes above this line or if you wants to let the market break out and pull back. Okay, you'll see that that happens usually with a channel formation. All right. The other thing is that when you get these breakouts, you want to make sure that this target zone is is um, viable and possible. So you can use power stats again down here in this view analysis. You can use the power stats combined with this target zone to come up with an idea that that's a good area to hit. The other thing you want to do is that when you hit the minimum target, you want to make sure you have some kind of trailing uh, rule in place so that you don't get a case where you give back 100% of the first rally. And you can see that I can show you several examples in the past I was showing you on some of those slides where the tendency is after you hit this initial target, 
you you do have that give back possibility. So you need to have a rule for trailing, and the trail could be you want to give you're willing to give back 50% of this rally. Maybe you're willing to give back only 25%, maybe 10%. But if you're not willing to give back uh, 100%, then certainly use a trailing stop. Okay, and again, have a several exits as well as entry rules. Know whether you want to buy strength sell weakness when to exit. So I'll take some questions right now because um, we're running out of time here um, and want to make sure I satisfy all these questions and let me zoom up this box here. I think I did pretty good. I didn't sneeze at all. Probably sound really terrible but um, We're very happy yeah, about that James. Thanks and we do hope you feel better soon. Thanks, Yvette, for cutting in there. I didn't know what happened to you guys. I didn't hear anybody <laughs> asking me a question. We're right here. We're right here. Uh, I've actually got a uh, question for you. It's from Mike Collier. Um, he says, are triangles a better trade on longer time frames? Um, I, I don't see that uh, they work better on long-term time frames, but what, I want, what, I'll, what I'll show you here is what I think is really a good way to use long-term time frames is there's an inverse relationship typically between, and probably think you never, you wouldn't hear that since uh, maybe high school. But yes, there is, in, there are inverse relationships. If I'm going to use a 15-minute chart, for example, I want to make sure that my length is 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 long. And so, uh, when I was showing this um, example of a U.S. and the Japanese yen here, I don't look at uh, saying, well, a triangle is good for a long-term pattern. What I look at is I have a 15-minute pattern here, and I want to make sure that I have a long, that my length is, is, is long, that's, you know, 100 or more, because I want to make sure that there, it's a clean pattern and that traders have seen this develop and that when I get the breakout that there's some muscle behind it. You know, if you get a pattern that takes, that, that you're buying a breakout on something that's, developed over 22 bars you know like here's an example I don't know what this is going to show but it's hit or miss to me whether it's going to uh, go up or down it tends to be more of a whipsaw but we'll see what this one looks like yeah you can see that it did it did work out very well even on a 22 bar pattern but what I try to find is I try to find short patterns and and long um, lengths okay so um, as far as triangle patterns are concerned in your question, if you use a daily, it, the same principle works that if you are in a long, a prolonged move on a daily chart and you get a triangle pattern, uh, they tend to be very good patterns, um, uh, very good long-term patterns. Here's like a 240 minute uh, and it, you can see that this kind of a weird uh, pattern for the yen but this is a not quite finished triangle. So you can get them on 15 minute all the way up to 240 up to daily. So to me, it, the longer the time period, the better the, the breakout. All right, next question. Do you have something there, Vat? Let me go back to my questions here. A look, James. Um, uh, mm-hmm. It's uh, we've got Robert um, Knapp. He says, "Does Auto Chartist um, does the Auto Chartist plugin put those numbers or levels on the chart?" Um, what's going to happen is uh, when you're using the MT4, yes. Uh, when you use the MT4 program, your power stats will appear on the chart to give you an idea of where the market go. And I assume that your met your um, referring to the uh, power stat numbers. If you are, then the power stats will be on the MT4 chart. So yes, that's a, that's a yes to that question. Uh, here's another question from PC. It does auto chartist select the optimum period over which the pattern should develop? Or is that relevant? Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't select the optimum period. You have to uh, work with the filters. You can set them low and you're going to get a lot of trades and you can set them high. But I can tell you to optimize, 
um, try to pair them together. Uh, as I mentioned, the initial trend and the breakout work together, so you want to set those high and try to co uh, coordinate those two. And then the uniformity and the clarity deal with what's going on inside the market. So you want to try to keep those at some uh, pretty decent levels. So five is the average. If you select everything at six, uh, that's a good start to search, uh, to start your search with. All right, I have the, uh, just from Chris, I have the auto charters from FXDD. Do I have the ability to use all the functions that you just went over, or do I need to use premium services? Um, not sure what, what package they have there, but uh, if you do not see that box appear uh, called View Analysis, then that means that you don't have the power stats. Okay, that's the, the easiest way I can answer that. You sound like a... Say, I don't know what that means. Um, hey, James, you're not going to understand what that means. I think we should wrap it up. Um, please don't end the session. I'm going to answer a few more questions on the dashboard. Um, so, I don't know, I think Sue wants to just uh, tell us what's going to happen next week. Yep. Thank you, James, for such an informative session on our set. It's really, really interesting. Um, we look forward to next week's webinar, where James will show us more on auto charges in T4 plugin. So same place, same time next week, guys. We'll proceed early because space is limited.